I'm getting rid of the uh, triolic pattern enhancer because it'll be effing useless in here. It's a blast assault. It is a blast assault. Okay. But this is supposed to be the ultimate weapon against the Davidians that I'm carrying right now, so... I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go in here with fucking security escorts and hordas, and I'm gonna fucking rock this place. In fact, everyone... Everyone out here... Oh, Jesus H! Lava monsters and security escorts away! And I'm chugging a bit. Nothing I can do about it. It's a good idea to fight them out here. I kind of botched it, but you want to lure as many of them out here as you can because if you don't, it will be a huge, huge, huge clusterfuck out here. And you want to revive everyone you can. Fuck! Shit! Alright. Okay, you guys wait out here. You want to lure as many of them as you can out here because, yeah, they will beat your ass. Fuck me, they hurt. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Thank you. Hey, I should have used that. Hy okay, I was to say I used a goddamn hyper spray. Okay, let's get rid of this fucking umbral. Son of a bitch. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, he's in. Ugh. He is almost dead, too. Die, motherfucker. Oh, shit. I'm about to die. About to die. I died. Now, uh, a bug that's been reported and is, is really, really, really pissing people off is that the boffs will not revive each other. You kind of have to go and revive them yourself. Okay. There we go. Oh, Jesus, fuck! What the hell is that? Ow! That is... What was... You asshole! <laughs> you are an asshole! <laughs> hey, so let's try... Let's actually try the triolic pattern enhancer. No, I want my crossfire triple. Let's give this a shot. I'm going to put everyone here. I'm going to drop the pattern enhancer here after I pet my triple. Drop the pattern enhancer. I'm going to go and piss it off now. 
Hey, you. Always brings his goddamn friend. In fact, everyone, concentrate on the Eidolon. We can't take both of these guys sucking all of our health energy out at once. Okay, they got him dead. Good. Somebody revive me. This guy hurts. He hits like a Mack truck. No, I... Not the triolic... No! The phantasm! <laughs> the hell are you targeting everything else? Shit! I can't even see what's going on in there now. Okay, give me the two security people. Where's my lava monster? Oh, I traded my Horda, didn't I? I did not want to do that. Come on, people. We got this. If I die, avenge me. Die! Yes! What did he leave me? He left me a weapon I already have. Fuck you. Sir, the Davidians' time portal heads back to the 23rd century. There's no telling how much trouble the Davidians may be causing in the past. Just where the technology to detect them doesn't exist. Once we get readings on the portal, we should take them back to Deep Space K-7. Their computing facilities are far more extensive than what we have on the Waglinde, and they might be able to find a way to shut down the portal. I had a problem with this, I remember. Ooh, a Phaser Sun Pistol Mark 10. Useless. Uh, I had a big problem with this. Let's go ahead and get rid of that Trialic Pattern Enhanced. Let's go ahead and get rid of that flashlight now. Because it's going to be forever useless. However, I will now demonstrate the method by which we can keep it. Theoretically, because I'm not sure if they fixed this. Take it and put it on a boff. There you go. Now we will see. Yeah, make sure you don't have it equipped on yourself or you will not be able to keep it at all. So I'm I'm not sure the boff part is going to work, but uh we shall see. Here's a bunch of God, they're all red shirts. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All the red shirts, man. The red shirts never knew what hit them. Another red shirt. Hence the term red shirt. The original series is where the term red shirt comes from. What that, uh, what the red shirt is, is it is essentially. Uh, Kirk or Spock or whoever would always beam down with uh, officer, an unnamed officer wearing a red shirt. Or they would, they would occasionally have a name. And they would die almost immediately to prove how serious the situation was. Okay, chill. Everyone chill. I think we got it. Scan the Davidian portal. Or scan the vending portal. The distortion from the portal is intense here, and it's difficult to process all of this information. We should at least be able to compensate enough to beam out, though. 
we need to take this information back to the nearest starbase, K7, for analysis. The computers are more po are powerful enough to process it. I call bullshit. Okay. Okay, kids. Uh, it's time to go home. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I called I called bullshit on that the first time through, and I'm calling it again. I am flying around in a galaxy-class starship. Galaxy-class starships are essentially flying cities designed to go where other ships couldn't. Oh, you're making me miss the Sierra One uniform. I like the Sierra One uniform. I like using it. It says Ensign, but you're a lieutenant commander. You should update your uniform a bit. I'm going to put this uniform back on for a while. I like the Sierra One uniform. It's the one It's the one uniform I keep coming back to. Like, whenever I see somebody else wearing it, I'm like, Oh, I missed that. I missed that uniform. Some other time, perhaps. Uh... It's very simple, and it's very Starfleet-ish. And there's a venture right in front of us. Go ahead and see if I can get a good view of it. There's a venture, and it's got an NX registry. Yeah! This is a ship, this is a ship that's, like, tailor-made for an NX registry, I've always thought. I don't like the nacelles. The nacelles look kind of... kind of derpy. I think maybe they should have been a bit more flat. You know, the nacelles should have been slightly flatter. USS Traverse. You know, I like I like the I like the aft shuttle bay. I don't like that there isn't a shuttle bay in the saucer though, but I do like the aft shuttle bay. Okay. Um I like the deflector. I don't like that the torpedo tubes are this high up. Uh, a lot of people had a problem with that. That you know, it, it like fires on itself whenever it shoots. It, it will it, the ship would hit itself. But these uh, nacelles, like the front end, it's it, it it's got to be just like the front of these things that puts me off. Is the front of these things look very derpy to me? Like they're not they don't look as strong as they should. They don't it doesn't match the the rest of the ship at all. It should be longer and flatter is what I always sort of thought is the very front of the nacelles but uh, that's just me but I, I really don't like I really don't like the front of those nacelles everything else about this the uh, venture looks fantastic it's just that and it's based on a uh, it's based on a perpetual design which is doubly great because it's based on the one ship that I wanted to fly in Star Trek Online that never got released in the game which is the original John Eves designed Excalibur class and I seem to be the odd man out I really liked this design and a lot of people hated it I'm talking like passionate hatred of this de of uh, this particular design. I'm like I I would I would have flown this I would have flown it around proudly. You know I I really liked that design. It was it had it was unique. Whatever you whatever you can say about the uh, John Eves designed Excalibur, uh, it was going to be the next Enterprise in the uh, perpetual design Star Trek Online before it got handed off to Cryptic. Uh, it was going to be or going to be the next Enterprise, and I was really looking forward to flying that ship around. I loved the design of it. I was really pissed off that it that you see pictures of it, and you see pictures of that ship all the time in like advertisements, such as the uh, sci-fi advertisement. The sci-fi Priodors had a big background picture. It still does, in fact, a big background picture of the Excalibur, and uh, not not the uh, Stoic Excalibur, the John Eves Excalibur that. Uh, like I said, they based the venture off on, off of, um, and you know you see this this ship in advertisements, and it's a bit like it's a bit of false advertisement. I wanted to fly this ship really badly, and you actually see, I believe it's geometry in the deep in the like the normal deep space encounters, like as a like dead ship floating in space. Uh, I wanted to fly that ship so bad. I think it was going to be something along the lines, like, as we think of now, of an assault cruiser. 
Oh, God, that sucked so much. I was so pissed off. Uh, but, yeah, that's part of the reason why part of me was really happy about the uh, venture. But I'm not forking over the money for it, because I can't, because I'm poor. Ha! Um, let's see. I haven't read K7's description, have I? Okay. The Federation base... Eh. Sorry. Tongue-tied. The Federation base Deep Space K7 orbits Sherman's planet, a developed world that was the site of, a, of a agricultural pioneering by the Federation during the 23rd century. Deep Space K7 continues to be a hub of strange events and occasional trouble sightings. Oh god, recording these gets me parched. There's a Venture Dreadnought. I, I like the, vent, the way the Venture Dreadnought looks. It actually looks way better than the Galaxy Dreadnought. It looks like it's. It looks more like its own ship, whereas the Galaxy Dreadnought looks more like you know just a Galaxy class with little bits attached. And there's a nice. That's actually the uh, Sovereign is another John Eves design. And what are you called? Uh, let's see if I can't get out of there. K7 operations. No. There we go. Oh, he left. Thanks, K7 operations. Damn. Welcome to Deep Space K7. Would you like to dock? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what was I thinking? The Sovereign. That's right. Uh, Sovereign itself is another John Eves design. I believe he also design may have designed the Defiant, and I know for a fact he designed Voyager. No, wait. He didn't. Did he design Voyager? I don't know. Oh God. I don't know. I don't know who designed Voyager. To Pell. Are you an alien or are you, uh. Let's see, Vulcan, stuff like engineer, but you've got Borg parts, so she's a uh, Vulcan who has been liberated from the collective. So I just need to use any random K7 computer, so excuse me, McKenzie, I'll be out of your way in a minute. This is Captain McKenzie Calhoun. He's widely regarded as a walking, crowning moment of awesome in the uh, expanded universe. Uh, I actually read the New Frontier books, and he's a very Kirkish character. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's uh, do what we came here to do so we can get out of Mackenzie Calhoun's way. That's one of the things I don't like. I don't, I don't like... No, no, no. I, I, sorry, dude. I didn't mean to. And he has, like, red eyes. He's supposed to have purple eyes. Uh, but I don't like that he's just standing here. Like, I understand why they don't have him more active in the plot, because there's probably stuff, you know, there's probably licensing stuff involved. Oh, uh, but I was actually about to mention that, uh, Mackenzie Calhoun is actually the only non-canon character who actually got his own action figure. Uh, nobody wants to fucking know that. But, you know, Mackenzie Calhoun is an awesome character, and he's just here all the time doing nothing he it's the equivalent it's a starfleet equivalent of a desk job and uh mckinsey hell would have to freeze over before mckinsey calhoun took a desk job essentially again what can you do but it really doesn't feel like mckin something mckinsey calhoun would do there's that sierra one uniform again so, preliminary analysis, temporal incursion consistent with Davidian time portal technology, approximate link data, stardate 2715.6, Earth standard year 2265. Davidian portal based on phase shifted tachyon spin surrounded by draw from Jazana station power supply. Can the portal be safely closed or used? Portal suffers from instability due to quantum particle entanglement with phase shifted particles. Portal can be enlarged or accessed with modulated directed energy when phase shifted and tangled matter reaches critical point. Fire a phaser at it, essentially. Sir, this means that when the triolic energy surges peak, we could remodulate an energy weapon, even a hand phaser, to use the portal and travel back in time. We could stop the Davidians at the source. So, yeah. Uh. 
I'm not sure if this is actually a reference to Voyager. Because in Voyager, there was an episode that involved a time portal that Janeway tried to collapse by firing phasers at it. And there's actually it's actually become a meme uh, where they have a picture of Janeway firing her phaser at the big time portal uh, with text underneath it saying Voyager should never be used as a justific... They did it on Voyager should never be used as a justification for anything ever. So I don't actually have to go to Sector Space to uh, hail Drake, thank God. Let's go ahead and hail him now. Now that we know that the, that the Davidians have a portal to the past, and approximately where they are focusing their attention, I see no other choice than to send you and your crew back there to stop them before they kill again. I'll be honest, time travel is a tool. At times, it is a very useful one. I know Starfleet has hundreds of regulations about temporal incursions, but my job is to preserve the Federation, not make Admiral Quinn and the rest of the suits at Starfleet Command happy. If we break a few rules along the way, so be it. I need to make some preparations before you can proceed. I will contact you when the time is right. Drake out. So, I take the trail like pattern enhancer. It's the only one of these rewards that's worth taking, but I already have it. So I'm going to take the poly weave armor, and I'm going to sell it. Sell it for all that it is worth. Actually, not really. Its value is 8,000. I got 3,000. Nah. Go ahead and get rid of all this shite, too. Alien potatoes. Alien stew. Start all. Blast assault. No. Uh, get rid of you. Get rid of you. So that was, uh... What Lies Beneath, the third episode of the Davidian Featured Episode series. It's not bad. Um, it's actually quite good. I'm not sure where I was going with that just now. Uh, it's a very, very good mission. What Lies Beneath, far better than, um, far better than Spin the Wheel. And it only gets better from here until the very end of Night of the Comet, where the game will hate you in, uh, in Night of the Comet. It, and a lot of people are really irritated by it as well. Um, let's see. I think that's it, though. I think everyth like, everything else from this point on is awesome. Uh, but, yeah, that will be then. That will be next time. I don't think I'm going to record uh, the next mission. Uh, they're performing account maintenance in the morning. And uh, I've already uh, edited and rendered one. Well, I've edited and rendered Skirmish. Recorded, spin, and render, and edit. Recorded and edited and rendered Spin the Wheel. And, uh... Basher. That's a, that's a good name for an escort captain. The... Captain Basher. Captain Basher in command of a ship designed to break stuff. Yeah. Um, where the fuck was I? Uh, I recorded, edited, and rendered Spin the Wheel. And I'm guessing by the time this night is over, I will have recorded, edited, and rendered uh, What Lies Beneath. So, I'm not doing the next one. <laughs> I've already gotten, I've already gotten, like, so far what I've got recorded is City on the Edge of Never, uh, Skirmish, Spin the Wheel, and now What Lies Beneath, and that's all going to be waiting on my hard drive to upload. Wow. And, uh, I'm recording things preemptively because, uh, I don't like to record over the holiday season. That's just something I do. But, uh, I will see you guys whenever I record. I'll probably record sometime later on tomorrow. I'll probably record the next one, which is, I believe, is called Everything Old is New. It's a fantastic mission, and, uh, it's very fun, and I'm, yeah, I'll probably record it tomorrow. Uh, but that will be then, and this has been What Lies Beneath, the third episode of the Davidian featured episode series. I keep wanting to say DeFerry, um, and, uh, this has been Star Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt. I'll see you guys later, so, later. <laughs>